Okay, so just. Okay, so the various parts of the heart, um, posterior to anterior, uh, the middle area that's sac like, would you lift up the ventricle as the sinus venosus? And blood would be flowing into a bilobed atrium. There's one lobe over here, another lobe here. And then from the bilobed atrium into the ventricle. And then from the ventricle into the tubular conus arteriosus. And then from the conus arteriosus, which is still the brown color like the ventricle, it's going to flow into the white tubular ventral aorta. And then there are going to be various afferent branchial arteries that take unoxygenated blood from the ventral aorta to the gills. So four and five are going to be back here, which four and then five is back a little bit further, which is not very visible. Three is very visible right there. And then the ventral aorta comes up. Oops. Comes up at the very end and makes a T, which is a little bit hard to see, but there's one branch going to each side. And then afferent branchial arteries one and two come off the T on each side. So one and two, and then three is the really obvious one, and then four and five back here. <coughs> So that blood goes out to the gills. So then once the blood is aerated in the gills, it goes into the collector loop, which um, <clears throat> there's a small branch right here that is going up along the anterior face of a gill pouch, that is the pre-traumatic branch. The larger artery which is going up the posterior face of the gill pouch is the post-traumatic branch. So aerated blood in the gills goes into the pre-traumatic and the post-traumatic. So those are both carrying oxygenated blood. They come down from the gills and join to form an efferent branchial artery. And so we've got, we've got a number of collector loops and a number of these efferent branchial arteries that are leading away from the gills. So all of that is carrying oxygenated blood away from the gills to the body. Um, let's see here. Coming off one of these anterior collector loops, we've got a hyoidean artery, which is that red one. Comes up here. There's a little branch that goes deep, which is the stapedial. And then from the stapedial coming on up here would be the internal carotid artery. And it's going to go deep into the skull there and supply the brain. Um, anything red in the lower jaw is going to be a branch of the external carotid. So internal carotid is going to the brain, external carotid takes blood to the lower jaw. Um, coming off um, a collector loop up here in the area of the heart is going to be a hyoid, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, a hyperbranchial artery. So there is a hypobranchial artery along the muscular wall. Hypobranchial artery comes over here and branches. One major branch is the coronary artery going to the heart. The other major branch is a red artery going deep along the pericardial cavity, and that's the pericardial artery. So pericardial and coronary join to form a hypobranchial artery. So all of those are red. Arteries down here and so on. <coughs> so there is a big celiac artery coming off the dorsal aorta. 
has two major branches, a very short gastrohepatic branch, which immediately divides into the hepatic artery, which is the red one that goes up here along the bile duct to the liver. The other branch is the red that's going to the stomach, which would be gastric artery. The other branch, uh, in addition to the, the uh, gastrohepatic, would be the pancreaticomesenteric, which is one here. Pancreatic mesenteric comes down here, goes underneath the intestine, and then goes on to the anterior part of the intestine as the anterior intestinal artery, the red one. Um, the other arteries here, there's a gastrohepatic, comes off the dorsal aorta and comes to the back of the spleen and then onto the back of the stomach. And the other one here is anterior mesenteric artery, which comes off the dorsal aorta and then when it goes onto the intestine, it's posterior intestinal artery. And then the other one coming off here and going to the rectal gland would be the posterior mesenteric artery. Um, in terms of the hepatic portal system, the big yellow vein here running along with the bile duct would be the hepatic portal vein. It has three branches. <clears throat> One branch is the gastric, which would be the yellow going onto the stomach. Second branch would be the pancreaticomesenteric that is paralleling the pancreomesenteric artery. Again, they go underneath the intestine and then come on to the anterior part of the intestine as the anterior mesenteric vein. Again, it's paralleling the man anterior mesenteric artery. There is another little branch off that pancreaticomesenteric vein which is looping here from the ventral over the pancreas over to the stomach, and that's going to be the anterior lanogastric vein. And then, so the, the two major branches again so far are gastric onto the stomach, pancreaticomesenteric vein, which then has these branches. And then the third major branch off the hepatic portal is a big um, vein that runs along the dorsal lobe of the pancreas. That's going to be your lienomesenteric vein. It divides into a posterior lienogastric vein, which is going to the back of the spleen and the stomach. And then the other branch is going to be the posterior intestinal that comes up here onto the intestine. So that's the hepatic portal system. Um, in terms of just major <coughs> veins, we've got lateral abdominal veins here on each side, big blue ones. Um, big posterior cardinal sinus, which there's actually a posterior cardinal vein on each side that is coming from the tail region and comes up on each side and then leads into that big sinus. And then your posterior cardinal sinus is going to empty into a common cardinal vein, so like blood coming through the posterior cardinal sinus up into a common cardinal vein right there, which is the narrow tube, and then that leads into the sinus venosus, and then again into the bilobed atrium, the ventricle, conus, back out the system. Okay.